Welcome to the Texas Truck Channel, I'm Brian. I'm Craig. And this week we have a doozy for you. Well, actually we have a Duramax for you. This is the 2024 GMC Sierra 2500 Denali, but not just that, the ultimate Denali Duramax, which means a 6.6 .6 turbo diesel paired with the Allison 10 speed transmission. It's also four wheel drive. So Craig, the biggest question is the ultimate. That's a big title and a big name. What does it give you? Well, it gives you this grill. It means the GMC is no longer the red color. It's actually blended in and you get this black chrome grill, which as we can tell, does scratch, which is a little bit concerning. It's kind of like gloss black, but it's like black chrome. So, But it's different than this chrome. But it's different than this chrome. You don't uh, lose the chrome hooks. That's part of the Denali trim as well. And also the mirror caps are still chrome. They don't match the grill, nor the chrome in the inlet. Which we're hmm. gonna talk about this in a minute. This inlet's actually kind of a big deal. So just know that you still do, you do still get chrome, but you get less of it. Um, these side parts do have HD in them. We have driven the GMC 1500 Ultimate Denali, and it has a similar package to this. This is just an HD flare. One of my favorite things in the exterior, Craig, I know it's silly, but come over here. This side badge right here says 2500 on this little cover. I think it's just a cool little placement of it. Headlights are good too. You still have the C-clamp design, and when you walk away and close it and lock it, it does a little cool little treatment. I think that's neat as well. On the corner of the emblem, the amber lights are embedded in the side, and they're very sleek, but they get the DOT requirements done. They're also paired with this guy right here. I like the flat top fender design, and I like the running light. These are actually illuminated. They're not just reflectors, and they say GMC in them. Some people don't like them because they think they look like work trucks, but that's kind of the appeal of the heavy duty. If you're a little kid that loves dump trucks and school buses and all these noisy diesel things, that's going to make sense for you. Now, coming on down to the wheel and tire package, one of my minor complaints with this is that an hd truck on 20s and this is not exclusive to the gm just pays a price for ride quality and this thing on some roads is pretty rough and that's just part of having an hd package with 20s there's not a lot of rubber to go around these are the goodyear wrangler trail runner ats now they i would call them an at craig they've got enough bite there they're right there with like a yoko geolander or a um, the BFG version of this or Trail Ridge, they'll work out. Um, it's not the most aggressive, but it's very quiet on the highway and it's got enough for some mild dirt and stuff like that. Good compromise. Good compromise. The wheel's not my preference, um, but it make, makes sense for this package. You've got a black center cap and a machine wheel. Some people hated it, some didn't care. That's eh, fine. I do think this truck's package, would. this thing's gonna sell to a lot of people. They're gonna put method wheels on it and giant tires and it's gonna look pretty cool actually. So, you know what time it is, Craig? Oh yeah, let's check it. Oh, it's different. We're in a diesel this time, and this is probably the biggest drawback of a diesel, is the smell that comes out of this area. You don't have a capless system, but that's just part of diesel life. That's how it goes. Where do you, where do you hang that cap when, when you're feeling? Oh, you can do it like this, which is what oh, most people do, okay. but there is a little hook here. Oh, that that's, that, that, oh, yeah. okay. But when you do it, you basically have to close the door to get it close enough and then hook it that way. Oh. So they have it, okay. right. and that smells like crap. We're gonna close that back. Um, but that's just the reality of it. And then look at this tip right here, Craig. Here's the nozzle cap for the def tank. See that? That's from the diesel fuel cap hitting it with nozzle. People are coming to fill up. It's just a dirty fuel. That's just part of it. It smells, but if you're a diesel guy, you know that that's part of it. Out back, you have again, the black chrome emblems right here. And your tailgate steps will leave the interior, meaning the bed for Craig here in a second. But down low, you've got the bigger hitch. This is not a two inch, this is bigger than that. The sleeve for the two inch adapter is in the console. This thing means business. We can tow over 18,000 pounds right here. Gosh, these HDs are not messing around. Now, your rear uh, wiring harness, you've got a seven way flat. And then you've got your trailer light adapters, not lights, your trailer camera system adapters right here. That's pretty cool. There is no four way flat because this thing's not screwing around. One more thing, Craig. People don't know you're driving a diesel unless you have an exhaust pipe that's big enough to uh, fist. So this one <laughs> does. Let's check out the other side of this pipe, which is the engine. All right, ladies, you've watched long enough. Let's check out the power side of things. There it is. Oh man, that hood is heavy, but it has dampers, which is good. And I want to talk about that inlet real quick. See this guy right here? Come back to the top. This is a functional intake. That is not just for look. It actually does something. Thank you, GM, for doing it real. That goes straight off the hood to here, right into the air intake for the engine. But what happens when it rains, Craig? Don't worry. Don't want to suck in water. You don't want to suck in water. There's a water air separator in the hood and you squeeze that guy out and the water just drains to the ground. That's what that's for. Wow, genius. Pretty cool, yep. Now, what we're looking at here, Craig, is the LB5 Gen 2 diesel. It has a new turbo on it, it has a new head design, and it has mostly a new piston design that's based around emissions and keeping temps down. Part of this is done by its high pressure fuel pump, which is good for over 30,000 PSI. This thing has an engine brake built into it, which is 
a little different than your semi-engine brake that you're thinking of. Diesels don't have throttle bodies, so when, they, when you're off throttle, it's literally just not putting fuel in the engine. So you can't engine brake coming down hills. What GM has done is they've added a butterfly valve after the turbo, so it can then create the vacuum effect that gas engines have when you're going downhill in gear. When you've got 30,000 pounds behind you, that matters. You're gonna want all of that, and it does that. Um, Power-wise, you've got 470 horsepower, 975 foot-pounds of torque, which is just bananas. It is boost by gear, so don't think your first gear is just gonna blow the tires off. It's not gonna do that to you. So, all that covered before we drive it, let's hop in the interior, then we'll take it for a rip. All right, Brian, time to check out the wonderful tailgate of the GMC Sierra, and it's just like all their half toes. You hit the two buttons and it opens, and you get the little, Brian, well, Brian yeah. likes to call it the, let me get the little handle up here. There you go. He calls it the mobile home front porch step, and yeah. I'm here to tell you that it's, it's awesome. Yeah, it's, it's really great. convenient. Not, it's not you can sit here if you're at a tailgate or if you're actually doing something on the work site and you need to, I don't know, change your shoes get out. Cup holders. Get cup holders. But it's easy to get it up in and out. You don't have to do all this big climbing. It's just right. got a little nice little step. What's that? That's really cool. This right here, it doesn't work. Okay. So, um, but back here, <laughs> you get the nice. Uh, wait, wait, hold on. What do you mean what? it doesn't work? It doesn't ever work. So, what you can do, Brian, is you can uh, plug in your USB or your aux, right, or your Bluetooth, and yeah. none of them connect. That's what you wait, can did do. You put, wait, did you get a teenager on it to figure it out? Yeah, they still couldn't figure it out. Okay, so, all right. Well, but back, moving on back here, Brian, you get connections, uh, or you get. A, I'm sorry, you get an outlet here, probably 400 watts. Mm -hmm. 400 watts. Yep. Kind Which of a is, fail. I'll be honest with you. That's a fail. Yeah. Um, you do get lights, um, bed lighting, and that's actually pretty handy at night. But the best thing GM does, and they do this kind of in all their trucks, they know how to do this. Yeah, they might be the best, too. I get a hook down low. Most trucks just give you one down low, which is a problem because a lot of times you don't want to go, you just want to mid, the mid one is a right. saver right there. And so is the top one, of course. You get it up front and in the back. And this is the, uh, well, Chevy calls it Chevy Tech. This is probably a GMC Tech liner. Sure. Whatever you want to call it. And there's your, Works. your fifth wheel hitch trailer mount right there, right? Yes. Or wiring harness. Absolutely. And this has a hitch package in the bed. You can actually flip the ball over and it's got the goose tank package. Moving on to the door, you get plenty of storage for bottles down here or any maps or whatever you're trying to put there. You get the nice stitching on the armrest. That's really cool. They do it on the front and the back. So you don't, there's not any, uh, a lot of times in the rear seats, you'd lose all that, but they keep it back here. And then of course the nice wood trim. This, what's the name of this in color? Uh, umber, this is, uh, umber. Light umber. This is a light umber. We call it saddle tan or whatever. I think it looks it's really beautiful. good. Yeah, it's absolutely and, beautiful. And Brian, you notice in that in that on the uh, door. Yeah, it's like door topographical. Right there. Yeah, you get uh, yes, those are coordinates to get to Mount Denali. That's what that is. Oh, okay. So that's pretty cool. Moving on to the actual interior. Let's sit down. Let's see what kind of room we got. <laughs> Plenty of room. Plenty Look, of it's room. a full size yeah. truck. It's not a problem. And uh, Brian, I want you to get in here and see what happens with uh, headspace. Okay. Let's see what happens here. So I got a good handle. The step, by the way, does not knock your calves off, and it's yep. actually. The, my favorite power step of all trucks right now. Mm, fair, fair. Because yeah. okay. I like to complain about that. So we, one of the things we don't have is we don't have a pano. We got right. a moonroof up front. We got a big, 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 bulk, big bulkhead. bulkhead there. But and you know, then I've got plenty of room back plenty here. Plenty of room is what happens. Every other brand wants to put a pano in, and I don't have headroom in the second yeah, row. So, so good job, GM. That's a that's not a fail. That's I'm a sure win. some people won't like that. There's not a pano option, but this is where it pays off. Um, you do get map pockets on both sides with more GPS coordinates. That's really nice. Or topographical coordinates. You get heated seats, Brian, hmm. for ninety-five thousand mm. dollars. Thought we'd get chilled seats, but we don't get those. Okay. One of the other good things, though, they've done this throughout. You get it up front in two spots, one spot back here. Yeah. USB A and C. That's the way to do it. I know we're trying to transition to USB C. I get it, but we're not there, not yet. there yet. We all yeah. got these plugs that have these now, and the kid stuff has it. We need both. Thanks for giving me both. GM's got it. The rear, the rear AC. Rear AC works, but you don't have any controls back here. It's just whatever it is is what it is. So when the kids say turn it up higher, you can't really do anything. It is what so it is. No try zone. You do get yes, a nice center armrest um, works. It's not all the way down, so nothing, yeah. no problem there. Good job done. And then Brian, let's check out one more thing in the seat. You get the little GM uh, storage pocket, which oh, is yeah. always really nice to hide sure. things Turn or band. toys or tablets. And then this works great. Look, that just pops up. Yep. No problems. And Brian, it just pops right back down. You don't have to pull any levers. That's great. I do like the simplicity of that. Very it's simple nice. and very usable. <laughs> Moving on to the interior, Brian. Let's uh, let's just start this bad boy up and show the people what we got. And we got the nice engine start stop button here, which is in a interesting pattern or design. Can, can I make a comment on that real quick? Yeah. It's it looks cool. My issue with it is that your eye is used to a start button nowadays. That's and, round. You, and you go looking around, you're like, well, where is it? And you look, yeah. oh, it's that thing. You get yeah. used to it. But I kept going for this guy. Yeah. Thinking this is the start button it's not in, my, round. in my peripheral. Yeah. Right. But you know, just something it's to point different. out. That's all. Let's start it though. Starts right up and we get the nice little welcome screen. We get plenty of things here. Let's turn this off so we can actually hear each other. So things things working here you can adjust some things in here um let's let's see here 
get different trips, timers, all kinds of gauges. Um, go to the settings and we get classic or we can go to progressive, which is, I guess, a little more liberal. <laughs> or we can okay. go to digital. <laughs> Which is Dental. a little, I don't know what that is. Uh, digital is, okay. It, so digital is, is minimized, is basically. boring. Yeah. And then yeah. clean might be the best. When you look, you're just exhausted. You don't want to see a lot of crap. Just just put it on that. There That's kind of nice. So anyways. Hey, question. What did you, you leave it on? Uh, classic. Yeah, me too. Yeah, because I want gauges. Right. Um, Infotainment-wise, Brian, infotainment's okay. You might hold it so it's less glare maybe sure. on your side. Um, it does have Apple CarPlay. Yep, wireless. And that does work. And that's good. Except, Brian, when I go to Maps and I actually want to get some navigation, it's still the smaller. It's screen. still the smaller screen. Now, if I go to the native screen, it can go all the way. I can hit this button here, and it right. goes all the way to the right, which is nice. Because Google is integrated in this, it does work fairly well. And so I've, I've logged in. I've got my home and work and all there, and that's pretty nice and pretty convenient. But I wish you could do that in Apple CarPlay, although you can filter through yeah. the different modes. But on the Colorado, which is a version of this, it gives you the full screen in CarPlay. Correct. So I'm not sure what's up with that. So we've got a nice home button here, a hard key. We go back to home. Nice. Here's the nice part. You can hit the camera button right here. And any of these modes, they stay on when you put them on. You can be driving at speed, and yeah. it'll just stay in this mode until you turn it off. Moving on over here real quick, I want to point out some things we get. We get the way all four-wheel drive systems should be. You get auto, which means it you can use it in icy conditions or wet conditions. On pavement. And then you get four high, four low, and then, of course, two high, which everybody's going to be in. And the modes, thank you. There's only two modes. That's all we need. We don't need a bunch of modes. Super simple. They work. And, of course, already headlight controls. But here's maybe the best thing that GM does. Look, the heads-up display works in this thing, and I can adjust it. I can adjust what's in there, I can adjust where it's positioned, and I can adjust the brightness of it with three different hard keys. That's the way to do it. Not really buried in that. the menu. Good job. Interesting thing here, Brian, I get a traditional handle for the transmission, which is the way it should be. I don't need any goofy knobs down here. This is really nice. Although, Brian, we did notice when we have it down in drive, it kind of blocks part of the it screen. It blocks Google de uh, destination so, and time and all that stuff. A yeah, little yeah. bit of a problem. It does free up a little bit of space here for... Well, not much. Maybe your wallet would be a perfect thing to put there. I did set another drink there. Okay, okay. Today. So it's just not a cup holder, but the thing's so stable, you can put stuff there. And then you do get your um, wireless charging, which, look, I'll say this. Every time I put it in there, it worked every time. That's yeah. hard to do these days. For whatever reason, that's a problem for most manufacturers. Not in this thing. And then you do get some nice storage down here. Brian got a little lay in here, and then he's got his receiver he, sleeve, yeah. sleeve he was talking about and earlier. More right and there. more charging. And more right USB-A, more right USB-C, USB-A, USB-C. And you forgot one more thing, Craig. What's that? Coordinates to the motherland. Oh, coordinates to Mount Denali. Yes, it's on there. Which uh, so when you get really it's close to that, what invited. I'll do? Get get really close to oh, that. You want to see? Uh, yeah. Oh, oh, okay. oh, sorry about right. that. So the flap. <laughs> the flap is still there. Let's go drive this. Yeah, let's okay, hit, right. hit it. <laughs> right, Brian, we're in the 24, which means L5P Generation Two. Yes, it does. Time to hit it. See what 975 pound feet of torque do. No. For auto offered mode, 2200 RPM and dump. Oh. Not bad. Okay. All right. Second gear, third gear, fourth gear already, fifth gear, sixth gear. Zero to yeah. 60 in 6.52. That's impressive. With, with me in it, Brian. Okay. And, and, and some heat soak. Some heat soak. And how hot is it today? It is 106 degrees right now. Yeah, that's yeah. incredible. So that's the fourth run we've done because we, we do some shots off camera um, to get a rolling launch shots. And also we do just feel out and see what the truck wants most. 6.41 is what I got without you in it. <laughs> this thing weighs about 8,200 pounds, right. give or take, depending on trim packages and right. who's in it at the time and fuel. And it's hot. And it's hot. That is an unbelievable number. It's insane. For that amount of weight. Right. It really and is. And hole in the wind. Absolute hole in the wind. Crazy. It's, it's the fist, right? Yes. Um, we've joked about GMCs getting more smileage than the Chevys in the past yeah. because of the fist. This has that nose. And man, it's got a radiator because this thing is not getting anywhere near to warm on tip no, edges here. GM's not messing around on cooling. No, they've taken that very serious. And look, if you're towing and you're doing an HD operation, that matters a yeah, lot. Yeah. Not like a lifestyle truck. This is a real work truck. Ooh, mm, shots fired. Word. Anyways, um, let's talk about ride and drive. I think the most important thing here to get on is that this is the only HD with independent front suspension and it shows. 
This thing does not wander on the highway like the Fords do and the Rams do. Right, that's correct. There's, and not that those are terrible. They're for a live front axle, those are sorted as oh, well yeah, as they very can well be. Sorted. And the long wheelbase hides that. This none of these are ever, worry about it. None of these are ever going to get the death wobble. No, it's not happening. Yeah. And this thing, look, I'd, we've put 1,200 miles on it as of right now in a week. I've had no problems with steering. No, the steering's been great. All right, the next thing is three quarter ton. Mm -hmm. Which one of the three quarter tons rides the best, Greg? The Ram rides the best. No question it, about it. And that's because it has coil springs? It just has coil springs. Yeah. This has leaves. There's five of them in the back. There's a bunch. And you can tell as it gets more weight, they start stacking and making a difference. Mm -hmm. um, and look, heavy duty trucks have to get a lot done. They've got to get big numbers. Yep. This truck can be configured up to like almost 40,000 pounds of towing, which is well, bananas. Well, like the payload on this one with this trim package is like 2,900 pounds, that's which is insane. insane. Bananas. Yeah. But it's doing, my only complaint with it is, it does, now, not a complaint, it doesn't ride as good as the Ram, it does ride a lot better than the Fords do. Absolutely. I think that's a very fair thing to say. Which, to be fair, is why Ford has higher payload numbers right. usually across right, right, the board. Right, right. We're not trying to jab at Ford. That's no, no, reality. no. Or jab at GM on that comment. That's just no, what it but is. Of the, the 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 bowls of porridge, this is doing a really good mix. Okay. It is. It is. Um, and what I'm getting at is my next complaint, and really my only complaint with the chassis and tuning, is that out back it's serious. And like a lot of mm -hmm. GM trucks for the last 30 years, the front is not as serious. No, oh, it's a little and softer. So if you're on the highway, you'll never notice this but if you're on a louisiana back road like i've been the last weekend for about 500 miles you're gonna find those bump stops you find you're gonna find bumps up front. front and the rear is gonna go did something happen up there yes exactly they're, right. they're just they're not they're so unrelated they're not even fifth cousins the front and rear they and have the, no idea they're working together and we found that in the half tone as well and it happened does it yeah, too yeah. and ford in all fairness is just stiff all the time and ram is soft all the time so it's right like, right it's just right. you'll get this wall up on the front that's kind and of again funny. it's kind of the goldilocks thing so yeah i, I want you to get into the so off camera we talked about the motor one of the things we oh, sure. about, one of the neat things about this motor is this thing's been around for a long time yes. in different iterations it's, been, it's evolved into its current um, status or right. its current state right um, but what that means is you can probably find parts for this thing all over the place if something does happen yeah so when Ford was messing around with Navistar <laughs> and blowing up head gaskets yeah. and needing to be bulletproof as they say for the six liter and the six four gene was just doing this the whole time and yeah. it's been good enough they're still doing it right and it's still viable and it's still a competitor in fact it just made it better and better and better and right. better yeah look this is this is a very refined diesel it is and you know we talked about the duramax those the lzl the smaller one the three mm -hmm. liter how like refined it was mm -hmm. this is that refined yep. and it's an old architecture that they've just come it's kind of like the ls they just keep making it relevant and keeping tweaking things here and there it is sorted and my wife asked if this was gas or diesel she didn't know wow that's how refined that, it is all right so big kudos on that and like you said the ford six seven which is a very good diesel it has not been around for 20 years it's been around for 10 yep. years yep. right so this is a decade of parts on the shelf mm -hmm. that's still bolted to this block so i just feel like mm -hmm. if you have this thing several hundred thousand miles you might be better off with this i don't know comment below what your experience has been Look, and that's the beauty of diesels. Look, diesels are designed to go longer and farther. They just really are. Yeah. So, and they, look, they, you get into some deep dives on this motor, it's engineered to take a lot of power yeah. and for a long time. They're not messing around. They're not messing around. No, it's good, it's solid, and look, it's a very viable competitor. This is the most time we've spent with the Duramax. We've driven them in years past, but not for the show. Mm -hmm. And it's really grown on me, yeah. I gotta say. It's a good truck, it's a good package. My only complaint is that the for the ultimate, which is $95,000, yeah. you don't get as much as you think you would. Like, you would think there's more, going, you would think you would get a little more technolo technological features that right. you just don't get. And that's kind of a complaint of the package, not the powertrain. No, it has nothing, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the powertrain's solid. In fact, I think it's, man, it and Ford, are, they're, they're trading punches so hard. The thing I'll end on with, with this, Brian, is, look, the three-quarter ton or heavy-duty truck market is very uniquely American. <laughs> yes, You mentioned, is. look, yeah. Italy, Italy's got Ferraris, Europe's got Land Rovers. Right. We get these. The, these aren't not. sold anywhere else. Yeah. And this is unique to America. And these are unbelievably North, North, North capable. America. Yeah. North America, yeah. specifically. These are unbelievably capable vehicles they're they're borderline semis and you can tell they've all got this like macho man complex of like i'm a peter build i'm a yeah. peter build i'm yeah. a peter build and it it shows it but does. but they're capable yeah no, and, they are and look they've all gotten so good too by the way i look i know the keyboard words are going to come out the ford guys and the ram guys about wait. why we're wrong with this thing here's what i'm here they're all really good they're insanely good they pick are. the one you want and, and enjoy it because they're unbelievably <laughs> okay. capable let's let's synopsis real quick i think of the three cummins power stroke duramax mm -hmm. 
Power Stroke and Duramax are in a different league than Cummins. I'm sorry, they just are. Power wise, Power, Power numbers wise, wise, absolutely. Yeah, numbers wise. Ride quality, nothing can touch the Ram. Nothing can touch And ergonomics, overall package for your money, Ford's leading on that. Mm -hmm. But there's trade offs on all of them. I don't know which one you need to get, depends on what you're doing. Absolutely, and this has the best build quality. Uh, yeah, I gotta say, the, the interior build quality on this is really impeccable. It's quiet. Yep. On that, very fine diesel. Good job, GM. Thanks for watching. Let us know if you have any questions in the comments below. Make sure you uh, subscribe and like our videos. That's how we get more of these, uh, and we got more coming your way. Thanks. See ya.